By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a really nice casual match of old school for you. I'm playing against friend of the channel, Joop Vak, and he has brought his zombie deck to the channel. Really a fun deck to play against, and I'm really looking forward to showing you this match. And I'm playing against his zombie army with my flying elementals. That's right, the deck is a mono red and is built around flying carpet and, well, elementals. Just put them on the carpet, they fly, and deal some damage to the opponent. Hopefully that's gonna work out. Um, but before I jump into the deck text, I've got lovely photos of both of these decks. First, there is a message from our sponsor because yes, this uh, episode is sponsored by our friends from 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. And now let's continue with the deck techs. And here you see the deck of my opponent, Joopvok. So he's playing zombies today and I'm so looking forward to this. Uh, maybe get, let's just start with the zombie master, right? That seems like a good, a good place to start. It's a 2-3 creature for 2 black and 1 that gives all your zombies swamp walk and pay 1 black regeneration. And because it gives regeneration, it combines really, really well with Nefneral Disc. Because as we know, the disc is an artifact for 4 that comes into play tapped. You can pay 1 second and then it destroys basically everything that is not a land. Um, and destroys means that your creatures can regenerate. And guess what? Zombie Master gives your zombies regeneration. So you can regenerate your army and your opponent is going to lose all their creatures. And then you have a walkover. At least that's the theory. Another thing that the Zombie Master does is that it gives um, Swamp Walk to the zombies. So that means that you're going to play with Evil Presence. Just one black to cast in Shantland turns a land into a basic swamp. Sometimes life is just really simple. Um, he's also playing with Cyclopean Tomb. I mean... Look at that art. Anson Maddox, you did a fantastic job on this one. This is an artifact that can create swamps. It can turn lands into swamps. It's truly unique. Very, very cool card. Very cool art. Talking about cool art, we also see two Knowledge Vaults in this deck. And we see a card that's still on my wants list. A full playset of Cabal Ghoul. I mean, this card is so sweet and pretty unique in what it does. It's a 1-1. One, one. And uh, when it comes into play, it gets a plus 1, plus 1 counter. Well, actually... Every time it's into play, not just when it comes into play, but at the end of turn, it gets a plus one, plus one counter for each creature that died that turn. Now, the unique thing about this card is that if I have an Avenural's disc out, I can pop the disc, destroy a lot of creatures. After that, I can play my Cabal Ghoul. It remembers, it sees all the creatures that died that turn. So in my end step, I'm getting plus one, plus one counters on the Ghoul for all the creatures that died, which is to me like kind of insane how that card works. That it's still in your hand. It has nothing to do with the battlefield, but still things that have happened before it came into play have a consequence uh, on the card itself, which is just, it's kind of mind boggling to me. I really love that the card does that. I think it's super cool. Um, anyway, when we're looking at the rest of the deck, we see a few cards that weren't zombies actually when they were first printed, but there was this big creature update, this creature errata, do you call it creature errata? I don't know. Anyway, this big creature update where they looked at the creature types and they said, you know what? We just want to have more uniformity. We want to give our players more options. And what they did is they made certain cards uh, an another creature type. They took away their old creature type. And here you see two examples of that. You see the uh, walking deads that are now uh, also zombies. And you also see the mummies, which are now also zombies. And especially the mummies are actually quite good when you're playing a zombie deck because it's one black and one for a two powered creature and the two power is really relevant here and remember it is a zombie so when you've got your zombie master it gets swamp walk it gets pay one black regeneration it works with the bat moon so i mean this card is really kind of what the zombie decks needed they didn't really have a good two drop until there was this big creature update of course you have the walking dead but that's only a one power creature so you're really looking for the double power the two power makes all the difference and then he's also playing with two 
uh, Islands of Wak Wak in his deck, which I think is pretty cool. And of course, he's playing with that because he doesn't have any flyers in his deck. So I think that my plan to put uh, elementals on a flying carpet is actually going to work against this deck. Oh, <laughs> I'm so evil. Talking about that, let's have a look at my flying elementals list. And here we see my deck. So I've called it Flying Elementals. And this deck is completely foreign black bordered, by the way. It's just one of these projects that you start with and you just continue getting the cards for the deck. And this whole idea of this deck started with two cards, Gravity Sphere and Flying Carpet, and a rule called Layering in Magic the Gathering. So I'm just going to explain that a little bit to you. You've got Gravity Sphere. It's one red and two for an enchant world that reads all creatures lose flying. Pretty basic, right? So nothing flies anymore. That is the layer of the continuous effect of this enchant world, right? That's on the whole table. That's just what happens. Well, what you can do then is after this effect takes place, you can give things flying. You can still do that. So I can use my, um, in this case, my flying carpet, the artifact from Arabian Nights, to give target creature flying. So I can use my flying carpet to give one of my creatures flying, and because my opponent doesn't have any flyers, my creature is basically unblockable and I can deal damage. I can rule the sky. And that's basically how this whole you know, deck came to be. And because um, I started with Gravity Sphere, I started combining the card with other cards, like, for example, Urza's Adventure, which is a creature for six. It's pretty bad. I'm, I'm going to admit it. It's pretty bad. It's a 4-4. Four, four. But for zero mana, you can give it an ability, including flying. So again, you've got this continuous effect, this layer on the whole battlefield that says nothing has flying, and then you give it flying and it flies. So this creature in this deck, when Gravity Sphere is out, is actually unblockable. So I just thought it was really funny. I was really intrigued by how this whole Gravity Sphere thing worked and how you could combine it with other cards. Uh, another really fun card in this deck is Al Abar's Carpet which is a, a, an artifact from uh, Legends. It looks like it's from Arabian Nights, by the way, but it's a Legends card. But look at that art. I always feel like it should be in Arabian Nights. But what you can do with this is five, I believe, is the, the cost for the ability. Five and tap, and then you don't take any damage from non-flying creatures. And guess what? With Gravity Sphere, your opponent only has non-flying creatures. And I love kind of the flavor of this. Like you can see the girl sitting or the woman sitting on the carpet. That's basically me, right? That's me as a sorcerer. I'm on the carpet. I'm looking down below. I see those creatures trying to hurt me. But hey, haha, I'm in the sky. You cannot hurt me. So just flavor-wise, it's it's super funny. And um, I always imagine that she, she is Jasmine, by the way, on the flying carpet from uh, the fairy tale Aladdin. And actually in the sideboard, not on this picture, but in the actual sideboard, I do play with an Aladdin in the board. So I think I took maybe the fireball out or one of the flash fires out and just putting Aladdin in there in the sideboard. Um, so that it just makes more sense. I can play Aladdin and the, and Jasmine and have the flying carpet kind of to have that fairy tale vibe. I guess I could call the deck Aladdin as well then, but then I think I have to play Aladdin main. Anyway, that's a, that's a different discussion. Why am I talking about Aladdin? Um, there are some other tricks in this deck as well. As you can see, I'm playing with four wall of fires. Um, the reason for that is um, this this plan needs time. I need to have time. So I figured out, let's play Maze of If and also a Wall of Fire because Wall of Fire is just cool. Uh, two red and one for an 05 wall that you can give plus one plus O for one red. And um, I was looking at this card and thought, hey, maybe I can combine this with Sword of the Ages. I, at the time when I was building this deck, I just um, got my, my first Sword of the Ages, an Italian copy. And Sword of the Ages is this um, this artifact that comes into play tapped. And when it untaps, you can tap it and sack any number of creatures that you want and deal damage equal to their combined power to any target. Now, the thing is, all those creatures get exiled and your sword get exiled as well. So if you want to use this sword, you usually use it to just kill your opponent with one blow. And then I figured out if I combine this with Wall of Fire, I kind of have this Wall of Fire, Sword of the Ages, Fireball thing going on. I just thought it was funny, so I built that in here. So the Wall of Fire has kind of a double function. Er early in the game, it's going to make sure I don't take any damage. And later in the game, I can use it as this Wall of Fire, Fireball contraption together with my Sword of the Ages. So I just thought that was uh, a lot of fun. And basically, that's the idea of the deck. You know, that's, that's it. I just added a lot of other cards. Like, for example, Earthquake is quite good in here because most of my creatures have a big toughness, or I can regenerate them like Clay Statue. Um, Falling Star, because it's just a cool card, and playing Fisher in this deck as well. I think Fisher is a little bit un under underestimated, in my opinion. I think it's a really cool card, to, uh, two red and three, 
instant speed destroy target land or creature um so yeah i think that's quite good actually it is it is a hefty price to pay for it though but but still i think i think it's a useful card and of course i'm also playing with two jam day tomes because this is really a controlling deck so if i'm playing from a control position it's always good to have some card draw in your deck you know that's from from my experience i can tell you that um if you play more of the control game you want to have some way to draw cards in in my case it's said uh, the two jam day tomes anyway uh this is my deck i hope you like it flying elementals it's been on the channel a few times and uh, i i always have fun with this deck it doesn't win a lot but it's guaranteed fun um anyway we looked at uh at the deck of my opponent we looked at this deck and that only means one thing we are ready for the game let's go Game a number one, here we go. Yupir on the play, playing mono black zombies. And I'm sitting on the right, I'm playing a mono red, but not the type of mono red you would expect. I'm playing with flying carpets, gravity spheres, and a lot of elementals that I want to put on the carpet. Anyway, both of us having uh, quite a slow start. Just playing out our basics, passing the turns. There's another swamp. Are we going to see a zombie master? No, we're going to see a cabal ghoul. 1-1 one, one for 3 mana, card from Arabian Nights, and uh, at the end step it gets a plus 1, plus 1 counter for each creature that died that turn. And here we see uh, another mountain for me, maybe a wall of fire, a fireball on the ghoul. That's pretty aggressive. And I don't have that many fireballs in the deck, by the way, so... A very aggressive play. And there's another Cabo Ghoul. So it is back. So if I would have just waited, maybe there's another mountain now. I could have taken both the ghouls out with one fireball, exactly. And there's a Felward Stone. Okay, so kind of ramping up here. So next turn, I could potentially play out one of my fire elementals or earth elementals. But I have to say, I'm not really doing that much. Luckily, my opponent isn't either. Finding Swamp, number five. Tapping three. Ooh, there's the Zombie Master, and now he has that regeneration on the Cabo Ghoul. So there's the attack. It's going to put me on 19. So the first damage now dealt. And that took us until turn 5, so we're going quite slow. Tapping 5 mana here, we're going to see a big bad elemental creature. Kind of expecting a Fire Elemental or an Earth Elemental here. In this case, the Fire Elemental 5-4 creature for 5 mana, a Vanilla. Passing the turn. So kind of keeping my uh, my strip mine here, not using it. Waiting for the right moment. Yupir tapping two black. What are we going to see? Ooh, there's a bad moon. That's pretty good, actually. All his black creatures get plus one, plus one. And remember, they still have regeneration. At least the Cabo Ghoul does. There's an evil presence. I wonder what he's going to uh, put the evil presence on. Probably on a mountain. Then I can choose to... Get rid of it with my strip mine. But then I'm losing two lands. That is kind of tough. No attack here from Yoop. He knows that if he attacks with the Cabo Ghoul, for example, in response, I can sack the swamp with the strip mine or destroy it with the strip mine, I should say. And then I can block the Cabo Ghoul on my fire elemental and kill it. Well, he does have regeneration, of course. So maybe he could have attacked here. Then again, he probably wants to keep it as a blocker as well. I mean, two damage and then take five damage uh, the next turn. I mean, that's not a very good deal for him. So I'll need to find a way to, I think, first get rid of the Zombie Master. Okay, going to tap five, it seems. Okay, there's an Earth Elemental. So this is four, five. So Fire Elementals have five, four, and the Earth Elemental is a four, five. So very big creatures here on the battlefield. My problem is that that Cabo Ghoul regenerates, but it could swing in with both next turn. Yoop tapping four here. Ooh, there's a Nevenerals disc. He can pop the disc, regenerate his ghoul. I mean, it is going to cost him, though. He's going to lose uh, four permanents, well, three permanents as well, because he can regenerate the ghoul, of course. But the ghoul will be pretty big. Gets a plus one, plus one counter for each creature that died that turn so that means it would get plus three plus three would turn into a four four but for now it's still tapped maybe i can find a shatter so three cards in hand a little bit in the tank here trying to figure out what to do 
attacking here with my 4-5 and my 5-4. Let's see what Yoop's going to do. Probably just going to block one, regenerate, and then take four from the uh, Earth Elemental. Exactly. He's going to drop to 16. And I'm going to tap five here, it seems. Ooh, there's an Earthquake for five, and it works because he doesn't have any mana anymore. And of course, an Earthquake for four here instead of five. Probably should do it for three, actually. Look at that, gonna kill my own fire elemental. Oh, because I, I need to kill the Zombie Master, of course. Zombie Master being a 2 3, and with the Bad Moon out, it's a, it's a 3 4. So I wanna kill that Zombie Master, so I'm kind of sacrificing my own fire elemental to kill the Zombie Master. And it must be tempting for Yupna to pop the disc, but if he does, he's gonna uh, lose, of course, his evil presence and his Bad Moon. But he's going to get rid of my Earth Elemental and my uh, Felwer Stone. I mean, if he's going to play out a creature that doesn't have regeneration, it's clear that he's not going to sack the, uh, the disc here. If he just passes, he's probably going to sack the disc when I attack. Another option is to now use the disc and then after that play something out. So he has some options here. It looks like he's really weighing out all those options. He is on 12, so he has some time still. Gonna tap. Yep, he's gonna pop the disc. I mean, makes sense, you know. A 4-5 against you is kind of tough. You would be dead in three turns. Oh, there's another couple of ghoul. Finding a lot of ghouls. And now we can actually see the ghoul in action. This is pretty cool. So it gets a counter. Because the Earth Elemental dies, it gets at the end of the turn. So it's now a 2-2. So despite the fact that the Ghoul wasn't in play when the Elemental got destroyed, it still counts because this trigger happens at the end of the turn. Playing out a Fire Elemental here, so I guess my hand was full of Elementals. And a Maze of If. Passing the turn. Two cards in hand. Oh, there's a Zombie Master. That's quite nice here for you. Really nice draw, one card in hand for you. Probably a top deck that Zombie Master means that a couple of ghoul now has regeneration, so it can easily block my fire elemental. Can I find a way to kill the Zombie Master? That's the question. Oh, there's a falling star. Oh, <laughs> this is cool. I can flip. I think the factory is the Zombie Master, and he's gonna, of course, put the regeneration shield on his couple of ghoul. Let's see if the uh, Falling Star can hit. There we go. Oops, it's a hit on both. Wow, and of course the Gobble Ghoul does get regenerated because of that uh, regeneration shield, but it does mean that I have a free attack here with the Fire Elemental. So I'm going to put Joop on 70. Here. He's in serious, serious trouble. He does get an extra counter for the Zombie Master that got killed. So he's going to tick up to a 3-3. That could be relevant. Need something good now. Here's a Headless Horseman and a Bad Moon. Okay, so Headless Horseman 2-2 Vanilla. Now a 3-3, of course. And the, uh, the Cabo Ghoul is actually a 4-4, so it can kill the Fire Elemental. And this Bad Moon is pretty good, actually. What can I do? Yupon 7. I mean, I need like an Earth Elemental or something. The problem is I've already played out so many. Going to tap two red here, it seems. There's a Felwer Stone. Not really what you're looking for playing with, uh, I believe, three or four Felwer Stones in this deck. Far from ideal. And it looks like I am going to attack. Now remember, I do have the Maze. So if there's a bad block, it can always Maze. So animating the Factory into a 2-2. Nope, changing my mind. <laughs> Not doing it at all. Looks like I'm... Am I going to attack here? Yeah, going to attack with the Fire Elemental. 5-4 creature getting into the red zone. I wonder if Yoop is willing to take the trade. Yep. He's going to take the trade. I'm not quite sure if this is a good trade, but what's done is done. 
So now Joop has a 3-3 Headless Horseman. And I have a 2-2 Mishra's Factory. Ooh, there's a Zombie Master. So the Headless Horseman now is Regeneration and Swamp Walk. If Joop can find another Evil Presence, he could play that on my Maze of If. Or maybe on my Factory. That could be another option. Anyway, let's first to see what I can do in my turn. Tapping 4 here. Ooh, a Gemday Tome. This is really good because we're kind of in a standstill. So this Tome could give me the victory in the long run. There's another Swamp here for Yoop, not really finding anything useful. I mean, I don't really see a good attack for him here. Also because I have that Maze, of course. And I'm going to untap, upkeep, draw. Finding another land. I could use my Tome Manier, deciding to pass the turn, though. Another Swamp for Yoop. And in end step, I'm going to use it to draw an extra card. Untap, upkeep, and draw my card for turn. So now the Tome is really uh, going to make a difference here. Two cards in hand. Passing the turn, nothing useful. Flying Carpet could be good here as well. There's the Scave Zombies, which is now a 3-3 as well because of the Bad Moon. So I mean, he's slowly building up his army. And I think next turn he can attack with the Scave Zombies and the Headless Horseman to put some pressure on my life. Still on 15, so I'm very healthy. But things can change pretty quickly if you keeps drawing all the creatures. Look at that attacking with both. Remember, Zombie uh, Master, of course, being a 3-4. So there's not anything I can do here uh, with my factory. So taking three points of damage from the Headless Horseman. And I am going to draw an extra card here. So on the end step of my opponent, untap upkeep, draw a card for turn, four cards in hand. I mean, it's looking, it's looking pretty bad for me. I need to find something useful. What I've got going for me here is that Tome. But then, of course, that Tome do, does need to give me useful cards. Looks like I'm going to tap quite a lot here. Ooh, there's an Earth Elemental. This is useful. The Earth Elemental is a 4-5, so it can block pretty much everything that you uh, throws at me. Unless, of course, he finds another Bad Moon. So all his creatures now get plus 2, plus 2. That means the Scape Zombies and the Headless Horseman are now a 4-4. But remember, my Earth Elemental is a 4-5, so there's not really an opening for him here. I mean, he could, for example, attack with all three of the creatures. I would probably send back the Zombie Master, block one of the two 4-4s, four and take four damage, go to eight. But he would lose a 4-4 four four creature in the process. Well, he can regenerate it, actually. Yeah, so he should attack... <laughs> I'm explaining it and realizing he should attack. What I can do now... Oh, I don't have any mana open. I wanted to say I could double block with the Mishra's Factory, but I can't. So probably going to send back the Zombie Master. Going to block the Headless Horseman. He's probably going to regenerate and take four and go down to eight. Ooh, the pressure is real. So now, you on seven, I'm on eight. So we're very close together. I need to find something useful with my Tome. There's a Hammerheim that can take away First Strike. Or actually, can, no, not First Strike. It can take away a Landwalk ability, which is actually relevant. Well, not right now, but could be relevant later in this matchup. You can also tap it for one red, by the way. Tapping a six here. Are we going to see Gaia's Avenger? No, Mirror Universe. Not really what you need. I think maybe it would have been better to just draw an extra card here instead of playing out the mirror. Perhaps I'm expecting uh, another four points of damage next turn. So then it would drop to four and I can use the mirror to change. But that would only mean a change of three life. But still could be useful. So two cards in hand here. Passing the turn to Yoop. I've got five mana open. But that's not enough to and draw a card and activate the factory if I want to block with it. And I think if you're Yoop, you probably don't want to attack right now because I have the mirror and also because I can now do a double block. So I can activate my factory and put my factory and Earth Elemental in front of the uh, four or five Zombie Master and kill it that way. That would be pretty bad for him. So, so yes, he is just passing the turn. I'm going to use the Tome here, drawing an extra card. 
Untap, upkeep, draw. Let's see if I can find something useful. There's another mountain. I've got a lot of lands, by the way. I wish I still had that fireball from earlier in the in this game. Going to use the tome again. So it's kind of desperation mode, right? When you're using the tome again. Starting to count. Tapping four red. There's a flying carpet. Okay, this is really good news. I can use the carpet to give my earth elemental flying and I could put Yoop on three. But then of course he can attack me next turn and deal some damage. But I mean, after that I can kill him. So I should really consider putting the earth elemental on the flying carpet, give it flying, deal four, put him on three. Then he's going to attack me. I can send one back with the mace, chump block one with the factory, take four, go to four. Three cards in hand, one card in hand for my opponent. I mean, if he draws a drain life, it's over anyway, so. Not quite sure what I'm doing here. Oh, he's passing the turn back. Another maze. Wow, double maze. Now I'm going to use the carpet with the double maze, of course. Attacking for four, going to put him on three. Yeah, wow. Yoop needs to find an answer. Or find a way to play out a big drain life this turn. Another swamp. What does he have? Oh, ashes to ashes. Yeah, that's not going to work. Ashes to ashes, a card from the dark deals five to you to remove two target creatures. Useless for you, Pierre. So winning game number one. And uh, we are going to dive into our sideboards and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it looks like I've taken a mulligan there. Six cards in hand. Yoop, of course, on the play, starting here with an Urborg. So this is the card that can take away uh, first strike, I believe. Passing the turn. Starting with a mountain. Ooh, I've got to turn one play. Look at this. Soul Ring into Felwerstone. Look at me, Ramp. Does mean I only have uh, four cards left after this, but still, it's pretty good. So I guess, oh yeah, of course, and start with six, draw card seven, play out three, that makes sense. Anyway, let's see what Yoop can do. Are we going to see a Cyclopean Mummy here for two? It is kind of his two drop. There's a Cyclopean Mummy. So this is a 2-1 creature from Legends. When it dies, it's removed from the game. And passing the turn here, it's actually a pretty good addition to the zombie family. Because it gives you a two-powered creature at the two-drop slot. So it's quite good. Tapping the Soul Ring here. Another Felwer Stone. So I've got a lot of mana, but do I have anything substantial to play out? Tapping three, one red and two black, I guess, because the Felwer Stone can only make black mana. There's a Gravity Sphere. Okay, so Gravity Sphere... In this match, not really useful since my opponent controls zero creatures with uh, flying. There's a swamp. Ooh, evil presence. Going to turn my mountain into a swamp. Attacking for two. So I'm going to go to 18. Untap, and now I don't have any red mana anymore, by the way. So this is weird, right? I've got a lot of mana. I was ramping up like crazy. But now I only have black mana and two colorless mana. Tapping five. There's uh, Al Abara's carpet. Okay, so this is kind of a combo, right? So I can put myself on the carpet, not take any damage. The problem with this trick is it's costing me five mana every turn. I mean, it's better than taking damage, but it's not really what you want to do. Oh, look at that, a Cyclopean Tomb. So Cyclopean Tomb is an artifact you can uh, pay two and tap, and then you can turn target uh, land into a swamp. So that's a problem. I think he can only use it during his upkeep, though. Like, he cannot use it at instant speed or something. So, But if I play out a mountain, I really have to think about what I want to do with it. Since my uh, opponent is pretty much uh, going to change it into a swamp the next turn. Look at this, just passing the turn. We've got an odd game two on our hands. Yeah, pointing out the combo, which is nice, but it's this is odd. 
So he's going to attack. I'm going to put myself on the carpet. Then he's going to pass. Yeah, using Olivar's carpet, taking no damage. No damage, baby. Look at me go. It is cool to see like the combo you had in your mind actually do something. Playing a couple ghoul here. So Yuk now has two zombies on the table. And I wonder what I can do to kind of break through the standstill. I mean, I do play with shatters in the deck, so if I can just find a red mana, shatter away the tomb. Okay, there is a red source. I've got six now. Are we going to see Gay as Adventure? I mean, Earth as Adventure. Of course, a Felwer Stone makes absolute sense. Oh, a Pyrokinesis. Yeah, I play those in the deck as well. This is a card sorcery from Legends, and I can deal four damage and divide it any way I choose. So I'm going to deal one to each creature and two to my opponent, Jupe. You can see that here it's going to drop to 18. Yeah, it's pretty good. And now, of course, in his upkeep, he's going to turn it uh, into a swamp. And there is a bad moon. I'm going to mark it with a counter to show that this swamp, this mountain is turned into a swamp by the Cyclopean tomb. That could be relevant later in the game. But what a weird game two this is. Tapping four. Oh, there's another carpet. So both carpets now, they're out, <laughs> but they're not doing much. And there is a zombie master from the top. I mean, this, this game could take a while. I would say grab a beer, grab something to eat, because we could be here a long time. I've got three cards in hand passing to turn back to Yoop. And also, this is tough for Yoop, right? He's like, what can I do? He's playing Mono Black. He's got no answers to artifacts. I mean, Nevnor's Disc. That could be a solution. Oh, there it is. Okay, talking about it. Playing it out, but I think he doesn't want to use the disc just yet because he would also kill his own zombie master. If he can draw another zombie master, they give each other regeneration, so then uh, he can regenerate it. So now I've got just four cards in hand, and I, I guess I'm just waiting for Yupir to to blow up the board. I mean, I'm sure within those four cards, I've got like a wall of fire or something. There's nothing I can play out now with double red. There's no way I can get that through. He's untapping his disc, playing a maze. Tapping four. Wow, a knowledge vault. Yeah, he's really not planning to use his disc anytime soon. I mean, this knowledge vault kind of shows his, his game plan. He's like, okay, it's at a standstill, but I don't mind. Because you cannot do anything, so I'm fine with that. I'm just going to... Put a lot of cards under the Knowledge Vault, and at the right time, I'm going to sack my disc and do my thing. And in the meanwhile, there's not a lot that I can do. going to go up to five cards in hand here. Ooh, I'm going to do something. Am I going to play out of land here? I mean, if he, if he pops the disc, I'm going to lose all my Mana Rocks, and all I've got left are two Mountains. Right? The rest is all gone. Like, my board's pretty empty. But like I said, I think Yoop's first exactly just going to put cards under that Knowledge Vault. He's got all the time in the world. Six cards in my hand right now. Looking again at my Swamps, just passing the turn back here to Yoop. Yoop drawing another Swamp. Probably going to use the Knowledge Vault. Exactly. I really wonder what that one card in his hand is. Maybe it's the uh, Ashes to Ashes that we saw earlier. I wonder if he would board that card out, actually. Anyway, drawing card number seven for me now. So I got to start discarding cards next turn. So seven cards in hand. Wow. Passing the turn. Oh, this is so funny. Another Swamp. So Yup is really land flooded. Another card under the Vault. Now three cards under the Vault at the moment. He's on 18. I'm on 16. This is game number two. I'm leading one game, but it's looking pretty bad for me in the second game. 
eight cards in my hand right now after drawing. I mean, I need to play something out. Maybe just a mountain, you know, let him, let him change it into a swamp. Exactly. Like, it's better than to discard something. Ooh, going to tap a lot. Are we going to see a big fireball? To the dome. An earthquake. Okay, that does the trick too. So an earthquake for seven. I think so. He will drop to 11. I'm on nine. And passing the turn. I still wonder when he's going to use the disc. I mean, he could also think, you know what? He's on nine. I'm just going to... Oh, look at this. Another evil presence. Oh, uh, and this is just really bad for me that he decides to play out an evil presence instead of using a Cyclopean Tomb. There's the Fallen. Oh, that's a really cool card from the dark. Also a zombie, of course. And the cool thing with the Fallen is once it has dealt damage to the opponent once, as long as the Fallen is in play, the opponent then is going to keep taking a damage every turn. It's a really cool card. I don't think we saw the Fallen on the original deck photo, by the way. So I guess you added that to the deck. There's a Cyclopean a Mummy. So he's just, he keeps building up cards. He's really not planning to use uh, the disc anytime soon. Attacking here with the Fallen. So I'm going to go on the uh, carpet again, not taking any damage. And I think the Fallen has to deal damage to, to trigger. It's going to draw a card for turn. I mean, we're so stuck in this game. If I can find a shatter, at least I can shatter the Cyclopean Tomb, but then I can try to start building up something. Another strategy, of course, could be just to wait till I draw into my fireball play. Okay, here we see a mountain. Tapping. Is there a shatter? Yep, there's the shatter. Yeah, I mean, I could also go for Knowledge Vault here. Maybe that's the better choice, actually. Go for Knowledge Vault. So many... Well, then again, he can second response. The good thing about Knowledge Vault, by the way, is you don't have to tap it to use the sack ability. So it's just zero sack. And then you get the cards under the Knowledge Vault. You do have to discard your own hand. But I believe Yup has no cards in hand anymore. So I think this Shatter should really be pointed towards the, uh, the Cyclopean Tomb. I could go for the disc. But then, of course, Yup is probably going to pop the disc. Yeah, going to go for the, uh, for the Cyclopean Tomb here. So that means that at least my next upkeep, or actually in Yup's upkeep, that one land will transform back to a mountain. And this is not too bad. Now I've got two mountains again. I can start playing out my elementals. I've got my flying carpet. There's another mummy. It's going to put another cart on there. Oh, and now he's going to use it, sacking it. This is insane. This, this shows how good Knowledge Vault can be. Because I think he took, what, six cards out of that one vault? And his hand was empty, so he's just drawing six. That is insane value. And I'm a little worried. I mean, if he can find a zombie master, he's in a pretty good spot, right? Because then all his zombies gain regeneration. He can pop the disc, destroy everything, regenerate his zombies, and then start attacking me next turn. Because I'm going to lose my Alabar's carpet. Going to lose everything on the board, basically. Only going to keep my lance. Look at him go attacking here. So I've got enough mana to go on the carpet. I mean, the fact that I need time to think maybe shows that I've got a mirror universe in hand. That could be the case. But I don't think I should take the risk. As soon as I play the, the, the universe, he's going to, of course, use his disc. So yeah, I'm going to use my Alabar's carpet, not take any damage. Going to stay on 9. Yoop on 11. Look at this. He's going to use the disc. I didn't expect this to happen. I thought he would just wait until he would draw into uh, he would draw into a zombie master, and now all my mountains are also going to or my swamps are going to turn into mountains because the evil presence is gone. I wonder what else is in his hand. 
Maybe a couple ghoul. Oh, there's a couple ghoul. That's going to be huge. How many creatures died? Three? Oh, but the mummies are exiled. Oh, that's unfortunate. That is not cool. I think Cyclopean mummy is again a creature. I wish they would have made it a little bit better. Like, for example, that it had some kind of buyback from the graveyard because it is a mummy. And instead they say, because it is a mummy, when it finally dies, it's gone forever. I can see that from a flavor perspective as well, but it's, it's really kind of bad that it doesn't work together with the Cabo Ghoul here. Bit of a non-bow. But hey, it's still a 2-2. Gonna tap 5. Yeah, there's an elemental. Finally able to play something out. So there's an earth elemental hitting the board. Five cards left in hand. But remember, I mean, Yoop still has the Maze of Ith. And it looks like uh, the Cabo Ghoul is getting the extra counter. So perhaps he did some reading. And it turns out that the Cyclopean Mummy goes to the graveyard first, hits the graveyard, and then goes into exile. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we looked it up at the time. So here are Scape Zombies, followed up by a Zombie Master. I mean, this it's not looking bad for you, here. I mean, I can't really attack because he has two regeneration zombies so he can double block. And he's got a maze, of course. And next turn, he can start attacking. He can just regenerate his creatures. Could even attack with all three. And then the, if I block the zombie master, use the maze to take it out of combat. And remember, I'm on nine. You know, I've taken quite some damage. Going to tap another five, another elemental, another earth elemental. Okay. That, that's looking pretty solid. I mean, if Yoop can just find one evil presence, that would do the trick for him. Going to tap four. There's a disc. That's actually quite good. The disc here in common. It is a walking dead. Yeah, this is nice. Next turn, he can use the disc. Destroy my elementals. Regenerate his zombie army. There's another mountain for me. I need to do something quick. No shatter. For a moment there, I thought it's a shatter. There's a fireball for four. Okay, so I'm going to kill the zombie master. Wow, this is an interesting game. So killing the zombie master. And now that Cabo Ghoul is at 5-5. Five, five. Like, that's huge. If he attacks with the ghoul, should I double block? Question mark. There's another Walking Dead. So one of the things he can do now is attack with Cabo Ghoul, Walking Dead, Scape Zombies. If I block the Scape Zombies, use the Maze to take it away, take it out of combat. Uh, if I double block, he can use the Maze. So I'm a little bit surprised he's only attacking with one. So a little bit conservative. I'm double blocking here. Ugh. Yeah, and then he uses the Maze. It no longer deals damage. So I guess it doesn't matter, but... Still looking pretty good for Yoop. But hey, I've got five cards in hand still. It's quite a lot. Okay, there's a wall of fire. That is really good. So wall of fire, 05 wall, and for one red, I can give it plus one plus O. It's gonna be really tough for you for Yoop to get through this. Of course, he can still use that disc. Regenerate his walking deads and then start attacking next turn. I guess he's waiting for the right moment. I mean, the thing is, if he uses disc, of course, he's going to destroy the beautiful big Cabo Ghoul. Four cards in hand for me, it seems. Going to tap three. Going to tap four. What are we going to see? Maybe a flying carpet for four. But I've got to, I mean, in the back of my head, I have to think about that disc as well. The disc is there. Yes, I want him to, to force him to, at a certain point, use the disc. But, you know, I don't want to, want to lose too many permanents to the disc. That's a difficult thing if you play against, like, an untapped disc. It's super annoying. You have to keep thinking, okay, what I add to the board is probably going to go because of that disc. So it has to be good enough to force him to use the disc, but not too good. So passing the turn, he looks like Yoop is going to use it on end step. Oh, not he's just, I thought he was going to use it. He just replaced it on a mat. 
<laughs> Man, another mace. Oh, crazy. So that one card with all the glare on it is the Escape Zombies, just a 2 2 vanilla. Another mountain. Wow. Four cards in hand, I think, still passing their turn. I mean, a double maze is also a huge pain. Even if I can find a flying carpet, he can just maze my attackers back. I think Sword of the Ages would be great here. The problem is the Sword of the Ages comes into play tapped, so he has time to, to use his disc before I can untap and use it. We're kind of keeping each other hostage here. Yeah, it's going to take away a land. Of course, he's afraid for a potential fireball. Is he now using the disc, by the way? Oh, he's using the disc. Finally going to use the disc. I think... Oh, he drew into a ghoul. Yeah, he wants to use Cabo Ghoul. So he waited until he found a ghoul. That's now a 6-6. Six, six. That's insane. That is so good. That is so good. Of course, you know, getting rid of two Earth Elementals, Wall of Fire, Escape Zombies, and the other Cobble Ghoul. Those are five creatures, so he gets five plus one plus one counters. It's now a six, six. I'm on nine. He could swing in for eight next turn. I'm on a two turn clock. Oh man, the Cobble Ghoul made all the difference. Tapping six. There's a Mirror Universe. Okay. Okay. Remember, with Mirror Universe, I can, I can change life totals. So if he's going to swing in, and if he's going to put me on one, I can change the life totals. There's a swamp. I don't think he's, any, he's got any cards in hand. Oh, just going to do the conservative attack. This is very clever. It's going to put me on seven. I have to change life now, because if I don't, he can kill me next turn. Like he's got lethal on board. And I need to decide this in my upkeep, by the way. So before I draw, I think I got to change life. It's at least, it's at least a plus four. Oh, I'm not doing it. Oh, does it mean I've got something in my hand? This is so risky. Going to tap five. Okay, do I have a blocker maybe? Fire elemental. Okay. But now if he attacks with everything, I have to block the Cabo Ghoul. Regardless, and I'm going to lose the Fire Elemental. Right? Because if I block a Walking Dead and then take, take 7, that's lethal. So, this is a very interesting game too. Look at that. He's, yeah, he's attacking with everything, of course. Have to block the Cabo Ghoul, which will then get an extra counter. will turn into a 7-7. Seven, seven. Wow, I'm going to go to 5, I think. There's nothing I can do here. Have to jump with the fire elemental. That feels bad. I think I should have changed lives. I think I should have changed lives here. I don't think it would have happened that much, but I don't know. Anyway, oh yes. Sending back the walking dead so I don't lose an extra life. So I'm on five. Going to change the life total. So now Yoop's on five, but yeah, he doesn't have to worry that much. The only thing that can save me is just a fireball. Fireball for the win. That could do it. There's a factory. So the factory is a jump. Tapping quite a lot here. I'm just playing a lot of blockers. I mean, it's still good because it can buy me time and I, I need time to find a direct damage ball. I think that's the only way for me to, to have a chance here. And Yoop is going to use his Knowledge Vault again. And of course, if you're Yoop, you just want to try to finish it as fast as you can. He's got to be worried about a potential fireball as well, knowing he plays against a red deck. Burn is always a problem. There he goes, attacking here. I mean, he's got two mazes, so he doesn't have to worry on the crackback. I love to see that Cabo Ghoul, by the way. That huge, beautiful 7-7 seven, seven Cabo Ghoul. How cool is that? I really need to get one. It's really high on my list. Tapping three. Oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, man. This is so sweet. So I'm going to take over his couple ghoul to probably to block one of his walking deads. 
and block the other walking dead so I don't have to take any damage. Oh, I'm taking the damage, really? I don't think I have to. Am I missing something here? There's another couple ghoul. Okay, but nothing died, so it's not that scary. I'm surprised I'm taking a damage. I think I didn't have to. Because I'm taking over the couple ghoul. It untaps. It can block one of the walking deads. Walk the, block the other walking dead on my fire elemental. Anyway, I'm on 10. What happened? Happened playing a GM day tome. I mean, that can get me closer to a fireball, but how much time do I still have? One more turn, maybe? Another Knowledge Vault activation. Three. Second of Vault. Three cards in hand here for Yoop. Attacking here with this army, including the Cabo Ghoul. Animate my factory. Gonna block the 1 1 Ghoul, probably. Got to chump block the other ghoul, by the way, the big one. Oh, wow. And then, of course, this other ghoul is going to grow as well because he's going to take it out of combat with the maze. This is very clever. Yeah, I'm probably going to put my factory in front of the bus here, which is the Cabo ghoul, the 7-7, seven, seven, which is insane. So, yeah, it's going to take the ghoul out. Then I'm going to use it to draw a card, of course. So, it's going to die. Oh, man. Going to go down to eight. There's a Headless Horseman. But hey, I've got another turn. As long as I'm alive, I can find that X spell. It does feel kind of lame to go for the X spell all the time. Drawing a card for turn. What is it? It's a Fisher. Okay, so Fisher could be useful. Play out the Fisher. And I can destroy the Cobble Ghoul. Yeah, exactly. I've got exactly five lands there, so I can destroy the ghoul. Passing the turn. So it does mean that the other ghoul keeps growing. So that's now a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, man, this is tough. I mean, I'm doing my best to stay alive, but those mazes are also so good here for you. So... Gonna block the ghoul, gonna use the mace, of course, to so take four damage. Oh man, this is my last turn, probably. A mountain in hand. Probably gonna do another open draw to try to find an answer. Finding another mountain. Gonna draw. Nope, there's a strip mine. That's it. I think I'm uh, I'm done for. Yeah, that's it. You winning here. Game number two. Congratulations, man. You've earned it. And look at that. No X spells coming anytime soon. So you winning this one. It's a 1-1. One, one. So we're going to go to an all deciding game. Number three. Game number three. Here we go. So this is the all decider. I'm on the play. Starting here with a Hammerheim, the land that can take away a Landwalk ability. Look at this. I've got a turn one Soul Ring. That's pretty sweet. Passing the turn. There's a Swamp for Yoop. And ooh, an Evil Presence taking care of that Hammerheim. So I'm going to turn that around to indicate that it's now a Swamp. Evil Presence and Enchant Land for one black. Turns any land into a Swamp. So really good in combination, of course, with a Zombie Master. Let's see what I can do. Ooh, no red mana though. This is a Mishra's Factory just passing the turn, so cannot really use the Soul Ring to play anything uh, of use here in my uh, second turn. There's a Walking Dead by Yoop, 1-1 one, one Regenerator. Of course, he doesn't have black mana now to regenerate it, so I do have an attack for two here. Exactly, gonna go into the red zone. Gonna put Yoop on 18. Let's see what else I can do. There's a Maze, okay, that can stop the Walking Dead. But I mean, where are my red mana? I need, I need mountains to play stuff out. Anyway, let's see what you can do. Tapping two black. There's a Cyclopean Mummy, 2-1. And when it dies, it's removed from the game. So not really uh, a good attack for me here. Kind of rearranging my lands. Okay, there's a mountain, finally. 
passing the turn though, not really using the mountain for anything. Pyrotechnics could have been useful here. There's an island of Wakwak from Yup. So that's the Arabian Nights land. You can tap it and turn target uh, creature's uh, power. That creature has to have flying to zero. There's another Cyclopean mummy. So Yup is kind of building up his army. And I'm a little bit worried because if he draws into a zombie master, all those uh, cards there, all those creatures gain swamp walk. And I've got a swamp, of course. That Hammerheim is now a swamp. Anyway, tapping three. There's a wall of fire. Okay. An O5 and uh, for one red, you can give it a plus one, plus O. So wall of fire, you know, can stop some of the zombies. There's another zombie, another walking dead. So four creatures now on the battlefield passing their turn. I think he's really just waiting to top deck that zombie master and start attacking. Can I finally play out something big? I've got enough mana now, enough mountains now to play out uh, an elemental, for example. Gonna tap four here. For an artifact, I guess, because I'm not tapping any red mana. So I think this could be yeah, exactly a jam day tome. So that's pretty good. As long as I'm in a standstill and I draw an extra card with the tome, I'm not unhappy. Just have to keep my fingers crossed here. Yup tapping two more. What's he going to do? There's a terror here on the wall of fire, I guess. And now he can just attack with everything because I only have that one maze. He can deal some damage. Oh, a bad moon. All his black creatures gain plus one, plus one. This is pretty big. I'm probably going to send back a, a Cyclopean mummy, but then still take seven damage. Going to drop here to 13. This is a great moment for you, Pierre. And now I can really feel the pressure. I mean, this bad moon is a problem. And remember, I'm playing red. I don't really have an answer for enchantments. So this could be problematic. So four cards in hand, maybe five now after the draw. I mean, he is stepped out. Pyrokinesis, or how do you call that? Pyrotechnics? That card would be really good right now. Tapping four. Okay, I guess it's not that card. Okay, there's a clay statue. This card is coming from the sideboard. It's a 3-1 artifact creature from Antiquities. And for two, you can regenerate it. So this, of course... Works really well against Jupe's deck because he's playing with Nevernoral's discs. This can survive a disc. So I think that's probably why I've boarded it in. It's going to tap four. Ooh, there's a Nevernoral's disc talking about it. And now it's on the board. Of course, comes into play tapped. When it untaps, you can pay one, sack it, and then it destroys all the creatures, enchantments, and artifacts. But uh, I think if you're Jupe, you're you're still kind of looking for... That zombie master could consider attacking here, isn't doing it. If he would attack, it probably would cost him a Cyclopean mummy, at least one. That I could then block with the clay statue, but he didn't. So uh, I'm playing out a mountain here. Haven't really used the book yet, by the way. I did find that strip mine, which could be quite good, right? If he finds a zombie master, I can strip my own uh, swamp with my strip mine. I mean, it's not really why you put the strip mine in the, in the deck, but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Look at this, just passing the turn, though. That is not great. Two more. Another bad moon. Wow, all his creatures now get plus two, plus two. So he's got two, three, three walking deads, and he's got two, four, three cyclopean mummies. That is pretty big. I mean, is he just going to attack with everything? Guess he's not passing the turn. Now remember, I mean, the Cyclopean Mummy is still a 4-3. So if I block it on the Clay Statue, it still dies. And of course, I could also use my uh, Mishra's Factory and the Compump itself can then also kill one of the Cyclopean Mummies. So I guess it makes sense that he doesn't attack. Tapping 4 here. Am I going to draw a card or am I going to play something out? Oh, Aladdin! Another card coming in from the sideboard. And this card is amazing on this board. It's a 1-1. And uh, you can use it to steal artifacts. You can tap it and you can take control of an artifact the opponent controls. And it stays in your control for as long as you have Al Aladdin in the, in the game. So you can even untap it and steal more artifacts with Aladdin. It's, it's really a good card. It's vulnerable though, because it's just a 1-1. One -one, and it's 4 to cast, so that's pretty steep cost. But now this is a real problem for you, because next turn I can say, you know what, give me the disc. So I wonder what Yoop's going to do if he's now just going to go all-in. Yeah, exactly. He's going to go for an all-in attack. 
that makes sense here because he kind of knows that next turn I'm going to probably try to steal the disc and then Yup has to make a choice, regenerate, uh, regenerate, or sorry, uh, use the disc or allow me to have the disc. He's probably going to use it. But anyway, first this combat step, he's going to attack here. Looks like I want to play something out, but changing my mind. Perhaps I have a disharmony in hand that could be useful for a combat situation. We saw that earlier in this match. So there's the clay statue. So that's going to block something at least. Yeah, Cyclopean Mummy. And I'm going to send a mummy back. And I guess I'm just going to take the damage because I want to keep enough mana open to regenerate the clay statue if you decides to use the disc. So that would mean four more damage. No, six more damage actually because they're plus two, plus two. Wow. Look at this. I'm dropping to seven. This was a pretty good attack by Yoop, and now he's going to pop the disc. Knowing, of course, that I've got that Aladdin, so he's going to do it now. And the good news for me is, of course, that he's going to lose those bad moons, so those walking deaths are now just one once. And, of course, I can swing in next turn. But the problem, though, is I'm on seven. I'm pretty low, so I'm in a dangerous spot here. And of course, uh, Yup is also losing that evil presence, so my Hammerheim is back. I mean, that Aladdin did so much for me. I mean, it was really good that I boarded that in. It's just ideal against decks that play with discs, I guess. Gonna tap. Four here, five even. Ooh, there's a fire elemental. A five, four. Vanilla creature attacking here with the statue. Yoop dropping to 15, passing the turn. And all of a sudden, Yoop is uh, in a pretty bad spot. Yes, I'm on 7 and he's on 15, but... I mean, this is tough. He's got two really good blockers, though, in the form of those two walking deaths with regeneration. There's a Knowledge Vault, so he's gonna draw some cards, I guess. Problem, though, here is that Yoop only has one black open to regenerate one of the, one of the walking deaths, so I've got another... Pretty decent attack for me lined up. So untap, upkeep, draw. Yoop on 15. So let's see if I can deal some extra damage. Could consider animating the Mistress Factory here as well. Gonna tap 5. Ooh, there's a Pyrotechnic. So this is really good right now. This can deal 4 damage any way I choose. So I can deal 1 damage to the Walking Dead, 1 damage to the Walking Dead, and 2 damage to Yoop. Exactly, so he's got to regenerate one of the walking deaths, so it becomes stabbed. One dice, takes two damage, and attack for eight. What a turn! He's on five! All of a sudden, another maze! This is looking so good for me. I have to admit, when he put me on seven with that huge attack, I was worried, but now I'm very confident. This is a huge problem for you. Needs to kind of, you know, draw the nuts here. There is another bad moon. Wow, finding lots of bad moons in this game, but it's not going to help him. He's on five. Is he? I think, I think he's going to die this turn, unless he's got a, a terror under that uh, knowledge vault, because I can animate the factory, attack with everything, and then even if he blocks the fire elemental, he's still going to die. Look at this attacking or putting everything sideways into the red zone. He's going to sack the vault. Draw a card. Is it a terror? That's a big question. Because then he can survive one more turn. Nope. Oh, finally a zombie master. That's kind of bad, right? He was waiting for the zombie master. That whole first part of this uh, game three. But this is it. Winning it here in game number three with my flying elementals deck. Yeah, I'm super happy. Showing what I had, had in hand. So I did have that disharmony in hand, by the way. A Sword of the Ages and a Flying Carpet. So Sword of the Ages would have been kind of an alternative way to uh, to win the game here. But yeah, pretty happy winning 2-1 with this deck. And here I'm showing the cards that I boarded out. So of course, uh, took the Gravity Spheres out after the second game. Not sure why I kept them in for the second game. Because uh, Yoop has zero flyers in his deck. And I guess what I put in were the, uh, the clay statues, of course, two of them. And I think I also boarded in the Al uh, Aladdin, of course, that we saw in action. Only have one, so I just boarded in the one. And I think I boarded in an Aladdin's ring. And you here boarded in uh, the Island of Vakvak, the Terror, the Drain Life. 
and another Terry. I think Terrors are really good against me, and of course, Island of Wakwak is quite good because my strategy is all about putting my big creatures on a flying carpet, and uh, yeah, Island of Wakwak can then stop the creatures because they have flying, so it can make them into a, a zero-powered creatures. Taking out the Cyclopean Tomb, the Headless Horseman, and the Ashes to Ashes. Okay, well, this was the match for this week. Well, for today, I should say, Thank you very much for watching and before you go, please leave a like, a comment and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. So please do that. And another way, another thing that you can do to support the channel is uh, joining the Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can become a patron of the show. And when you become a patron of the show, it's pretty cool. You get access to the Timmy Talks Discord page. You can join in on all of our online events. And if you become a patron at the $5 level, you can also make an episode with me. So if you want to play a game of magic and make an episode out of it, check out the patreon.com slash Timmy Talks $5 tier level. And um, But hey, you can also become a supporter for just $1. That would be also amazing and fantastic. Uh, because then your name will be also mentioned in the end scroll of at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, somber gezien.